Hello, my gorgeous little pickles. I've been having a good think, you know, because a lot of my work, as you've probably gathered by now, is very much about growing that gorgeous, positive growth mindset in our children, because there's no space for that in schools, unfortunately. There just isn't. It's a big sausage factory with little pastry cutters stamping our children. Oh, we go, there's Peter, there's Jane, into these little shapes. I'm having a small rant, aren't I? Sorry. But, you know, it is a bit like that, isn't it? And um, if you're a child with a different ability, it's even worse because you don't even come out that shape to begin with. You're a different shape. And then they try and make you that shape. It's not going to happen. So positive growth mindset, that's a big thing at the moment. But bearing in mind, last night, I woke up this morning and I had over 60 emails from people saying to me about how their children are so worried and the anxiety levels have peaked at the thought of going back to school. They're really excited to see their friends because they've missed their friends, but they're really not looking forward to that whole, you know, I am defined by a set of exam grades. It's a load of rubbish. And let me tell you now, for those of you who don't know my story, my oldest son who has dyslexia, Art, got him through school and we were having a terrible, terrible time of things at home. Absolutely unbelievable. Um, Art got him through and he's just finished his art degree. My second son, who has autism, was totally written off by his school, totally written off. I was told he'd never achieve anything. His funding was legally spent elsewhere. Nothing was, you know, no wrongdoing was done, not legally, but ethically, hmm, anyway. So my boy, who's, who they said would never achieve, is, is um, he's just finished his master's and has just applied for a doctorate in creative writing. Oh my God, I just had to have a bit of a proud mummy moment then, you know. You know, so you, you're not, kids, you are not defined by a set of exam grades. It's handy to have those keys to open the door and go straight through and, you know, but do you know what? You've got so many other things to grow and there's so much to learn outside of four walls of the classroom. And what we tell our children, please, parents, teachers, children, what you tell each other, what we tell our children is absolutely what they become. With an adult, you they take about 400 to 600 times to receive the same message for it to go in, because we get a bit thicker as we're older. But when you're little, when you're younger, especially if you're in a state of play or you're relaxed or, you know, you're nice and peaceful, you only have, it's only four to six times for that message to rewire your brain. This is why brainwashing is a real thing. It's an absolutely real thing. And what we tell people is what they become. So bullies who are very frightened will often say, oh, you know, you're this, you're that, and make you feel like the small one. And actually it's them. But when they've said that to you enough times, you start to feel that fear. And it's the same with school. So, oh, that sounded terrible, it makes me sound like I'm saying school is a bully. I'm not saying that, it could be a wonderful experience. But what it doesn't encompass are those skills that you children can then take into the workplace. It's about 50 years behind, you know. So on that note, I want to build you into these beautiful people, full of potential. I'm always telling you, you've all got superpowers. You're all superheroes of some sort. And, and this label, special needs, I'm just gonna have a little rant about that while I'm on it. We all have a special need at some time or another, all of us. So, you know, when you learn life skills, you learn about each other, yourselves, and you can then take that into the workplace because you develop all these wonderful emotional and social skills. Anyway, I'm not here to give you a big lecture. I have gone on a little bit, I do apologize. So what I've done for my rainbows when they come back in September, I've made a little banner. And my dear friend Caroline from Belfast, who um, she heads up a group out there that I train and I'm going back out there in March, I can't believe it. I love going to Ireland, I always wanted to go. Anyway, so she sent me the, a few things for my rainbow children and one of them was this chalkboard banner. And I thought, wouldn't this be lovely to have in schools? Because one thing the kids always say to me is, it's always the same people who either get told off, get tons of praise, or get all the merit points or e-praise points or whatever their house points, whatever system their school has. And I think, wouldn't it be lovely if instead of children always being graded by points and numbers and letters, why don't, wouldn't this be lovely just to have in a classroom? I made it just now, because I was thinking about this hard. Because I really read all your emails, you know, and I really... I take them to heart and I think, right, what can I do to help? So that's why I'm always coming up with these mad ideas. So I wrote on my little chalkboard banner, 
you try even when it's hard and you're sad. Now that is something that should be rewarded. And then all those kids who just disappear under the radar and drown silently, or the ones who struggle with behaviour because their brains don't make enough dopamine, um, you know, sometimes it's, it's nothing to do with ADHD. It might be that they're trying to communicate something terrible that's going on in their lives. So, but they, if they're still trying and if they make an effort, you know, rewards should be for the whole person and not just what they're producing. Then I put, you are kind and empathetic. And my, my rainbow children all know what empathy means. You have the power of yet. So it's not you can't do it, it's you can't do it yet. Yay! I love that word. It's always yet with me. I haven't found a way yet. You just said no to me. Well, we'll see about that. I just haven't found a way yet. That's how I was with Ollie. Honestly, that college knew me by my first name. I'd, I'd ring in. It was so, I won't say how many um, students were there because I've never named the school, but honestly, I would ring in and they'd say, oh, hello, Juliana, before I'd even introduce myself. So it was always a yet. They'd think, here she comes, Mrs. Yet. You can do hard things. That's all about not giving up. You are a good problem solver. You are a good team builder. Now, is that, how important is that for the workplace? Not just to work on your own, but to be able to build people up. You can get terrifically intelligent people and they have zero people skills. They have no clue of how to speak with people, to build a team. You know, if, you're, if you dream of building a team or building a business, the first thing you need to know how to do is to build people because otherwise you'll just make them quiet. And if someone's quiet, that's not good. So you are, you think outside the box, you never give up. You have word changer power. That one I put in because I thought, yes, what words could we use to make things positive, to make us feel, you know, really good about things and what we do. You have grit, so important for life, so important for life. And do you know what? A lot of kids these days have got that in bucket loads, in bucket loads. How some of them even get through the school gates at half eight in the morning, I have no idea. Um, you are an encourager and that's really good because instead of pitting children against each other and making life seem like a big race there are aspects to it yeah of course there's that but there's so much more there's so much more so I came up with this idea because I thought on the back where it's blank on chalk you could write all the children in your class or in my rainbows or in your sessions or if you're a, um, an SEN teacher or just a class teacher for goodness sake why don't you get something like this going? I'm not telling you how to do your jobs, I promise. But honestly, it would be such a different environment. I know it would be. And you could just write the names of all the children on the back who have done these things. You see? Wonderful. Or you, if you haven't got a chalkboard banner, you can just go to a craft shop. Look, I've got one ready. I so like free pizza. I got one made earlier. Here it is. You can write things on there. Anyway, so then somebody gave me a present. And, and I kept the box because I thought it was really beautiful. And I thought, what could I do with it? So I turned it into what I call my life box. And in here, I've, I did a game for the children on all these things about positive mindset. So just to give you a clue, it's um, who did you help today? Um, what, did you, what do you like about yourself? Do you know, I did something like this with a little boy earlier this week. He, didn't, he said he had no superpowers, he didn't like anything at all about himself. And I'm honestly not just saying it, within 20 minutes of just doing a game, we found six or seven things, gifts, that he's so good at. And what a sensitive, caring, absolutely gorgeous boy, you know. And, and he's got this idea already, and he's only six, that he's no good at anything. No six-year-old should be thinking that. It, my heart was breaking. I should do a bit of professional detachment, but I can't because I just love you all. A strength of mine that I can still improve on is, see, positive growth mindset. What can we grow that's really good about ourselves? And what can we overcome that we find a bit tricky? You don't give up. Instead of thinking someone is cleverer than you, be inspired by those who succeed and learn from them. And my Rainbow Kids and I will sit and talk about this. You know, who inspires us? It might be, very often it's YouTubers with my middle school age group. But for others, you know, there was one girl, and it's one of my favourite quotes too, one of my teenagers who I went, who I did a session with, she said, well, mine is Audrey Hepburn. You know, impossible is just I'm possible without the apostrophe. That's one of mine. I've got it on my Instagram board. So I recognise it instantly it's always I'm possible don't don't let anybody ever define you or tell you that you can't in fact if they tell you you can't 
make sure that you absolutely do like my sons make sure you do and show them because there's no need for anything spiteful then at all well there shouldn't be anyway because your life is your life you you know let silly people go but you know to, to think that you can rise above that if somebody tells you it's impossible remember that think well i'm possible and show them show them People are doing it all the time, you know. You are a trailblazer. You are not afraid to be the first one to try new things. So they're all things like this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them all in the box. Instead of I can't do this, I believe in myself and will keep trying. Trying really hard is the way to become smarter. Effort and attitude is the way to become smarter too. It's not just your grades, you know. So it, it's not everything. And these days in, 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 in work, I know it sounds mad I'm talking about work, but actually we do need to make that bridge between school and work. We really, really do. Because our children are leaving with none of these life skills or positive growth mindsets. It's very rare to find a school that embraces it. So um, now in employment, they say IQ, your cognitive skills, get you the job and incidentally when you have a positive growth mindset your brain actually becomes bigger the gray matter becomes bigger and the and the gray matter around the, the emotional brain where we flip our lid there's the fight or flight that actually shrinks so by doing this you're actually growing your cognitive abilities to the highest potential but what you're also growing is your emotional and social intelligence and in employment now iq will get you the job EQ and SQ, emotional and social intelligence, will get you the promotion. So even in the workplace, they're looking at this. I'm going on a bit, aren't I? I'm so sorry. I just look at me in all my bits of paper. Anyway, I'm going to do. I'm going to do a couple. So I've made this life box, life skills, and you can you can make it into a game. You could make it into sweets, and whichever counter you throw, you can pick a, a card that colour. Um, you could make a trail and throw dice, and which one you land on, you turn over and look at. You could do it as a lucky dip. You can hide them all around your house or the classroom, you know, so you can turn this into all sorts of different games because, you know, we can't just stick. I can never stick to one thing. I get bored. So I picked up you are a trailblazer. I'm obviously meant to do that then because that's the second one. The second time I've picked it up. You are not afraid to be the first one to try new things. OK, so what did I do that was trailblazing? Um, I set up my massage oh my goodness me i set up my massage for kids with different abilities not special needs different abilities i did that i'd had my foot broken in three places and um i had absolutely no money and i went round all the schools and i worked for free for six weeks because no one was doing this as, as far as i knew and certainly not in my area so i went and did that and within six weeks i was being paid and within six months i had waiting lists and i was beginning to train people so you know don't let anybody tell you you can't and incidentally i didn't sit in school when i was 10 11 years old and think do you know what one day i'm going to write a book and be a therapist for um children and young adults who have different abilities and work with their families and train teachers i never thought that it didn't exist so, you know, it just goes to show you. Always be open to things in life. Sorry, I'm carrying off on one. Word change of power. You change your words into powerful and positive words that help others feel strong. Yes, I do. I've, I do do that. That, that. I wouldn't have been able to say that six months ago, but I can say it now because I'm trying to grow my own growth positive mindset other way around. Um, yes, I do, because... To me, and, and this is not just, it's not empty words to make people feel strong, not at all. It's what I believe. Because when I'm given any child, whether they're neurotypical, neurodiverse, they are that child. And yes, they might have some issues and challenges that are common behind a label, but behind that, they have their own unique traits, characteristics, gifts and strengths. And so I do, I do always see that flip side. I don't see fixations as fixations with autism or ADHD I see them as gifts I see them as passion I see them as energy and it's about harnessing that it's just about having a different positive viewpoint and I always believe in those kids because children are like wet cement they really really are I learned that on my trainings and you know it is true what we tell them is what they become and you might be that one adult who believes in a child and set them on their way to being that little superhero that they long to be and they are, they're all superheroes, they, they truly are. I'll do one more. 
I'm not going to do that one. You have the power of yet. I've already done that. You are a good problem solver. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, I am. You don't let problems stop you. You work them out. Yes, it's been an interesting life. Um, it's never been A to B, ever. Um, not just with my children, but in some of the things from my life. And you know what? I've had fun and I'm still having fun. And, and it's all about learning from that. Even the stuff that was really heartbreaking and really hard and sad and difficult and frustrating and frightening. I've learned something from each of those things and it's helped me. I may be little, but I'm ever so tough, you know. I'm like a little cockroach. You could drop a bomb on me and I'll come out and think, right, what are we gonna do with all these ashes then? And I'd make something. That's awful, isn't it? An awful analogy. I'm not like a cockroach. I'm lovely, really, honestly. I'm gonna stop there. Anyway, positive mindset. Let's get it going for our kids, for the future, you know. And if you boost that, teachers and head teachers, you boost exam grades because the grey matter in the right areas will be growing in our lovely children. So as I always say, have fun with it, make your life boxes, make your banners and um, build our children. Please build our children. They are our future and they are so much more than a set of exam grades. And I know your job, teachers, is really, really difficult. I really, really know that. I see it all the time in schools. But this would help make your life easier too just something like this to include the whole class or as a family if you've got one child who has a different ability and most of your attention is taken up with them and i'm speaking from experience if you did something like this i, I wish i'd known about all this when i was bringing up my four children well i still am bringing them up i still got two well one one who's very quite young still 14. so you know, I wish I'd done that because it would have embraced everybody and it would have it would have helped whichever child I was trying to help at the time too to see their gifts and their strengths. But again, this is another one of those things I've learned from. And we're always learning, aren't we? That's what keeps us young. It's what keeps us happy. So go and learn. Go and learn about each other and have fun and build a lovely future.